We all know Connor Bedard, Adam Fantilli, and Leo Carlson, but every single year there are huge draft steals that impact NHL teams and really take them over the top. But in this 2023 NHL draft, who are the top 10 biggest draft steals? We'll watch till the end for the complete rankings and every single prospect and where they could end up. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new for more prospect content just like this all throughout the year. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. But folks, we got an action-packed video for today. But first, I need to be powered up by Grizzly Energy. I got the orange mango flavor here. Absolutely delicious. We're going to rip it open. Take a good, nice, long sip. Just absolutely friggin' delicious. But y'all... If y'all want some friggin' amazing orange mango, go on the description, click on the Grizzly link, and get some for yourself. Highly recommend it, and thank you so much, Grizzly, for sponsoring today's video. Cheers! Now let's get the top 10 biggest potential steals of the 2023 draft list started here at number 10 with a fascinating player, a guy that was just outside my top 55, but is a player that I do like and respect quite a bit in Brady Cleveland, who is committed to the University of Wisconsin, hopefully does big things there as a Badger, but six foot four, 201 pounds, and he was playing with the US NTDP this last year, didn't get a lot of points as you can see, six points, 55 games. He's never going to be an offensive player by any means but he's one of the best physical defensive players of this draft, one of the most efficient as well in transition, and he's a player that, although will not stack up points at the NHL level, I could see being a really fantastic bottom pair, shut down, penalty kill guy who brings big hits, big plays, and knows how to control the gap as well, knows how to play against speedier forwards too, and I think as a defensive player, a guy that you could get in the third round, I think there's much worse options out there, even if the offensive potential isn't quite there. But now moving on to number nine and the ninth potential steal of the 2023 NHL draft, a player that probably drinks a lot of Grizzly energy himself in Martin Mishiak, who is a fascinating Slovak centerman, 18 years old, six foot two, 198 pounds. The physical traits as well as the skating attributes, I think are the best parts about Mishiak. He's a player that I have in my top 45, but is a player in Bob McKenzie's list who was in the 70s and could be had in that third round, which to me will be an excellent pick. You can play, you can see he's played solid in Slovakia, wasn't putting up the point numbers that you'd want to see in the regular season in the USHL, 17 points in 27 games, got 10 points in nine playoff games, and really rose up his game at that level. Also, I think it was solid at the U20 World Juniors for Slovakia, even though he didn't get a point there. But to me, as this great skating physical player, who can also shoot pretty solidly too, I think Mishak is in a really interesting position. He's a player that can bring some great talent, can bring some great physical size there, even if the ceiling isn't fantastic offensively. To me, as this fantastic, hardworking, four-checking third liner, Mishak could be perfect in that role. Now going on to the eighth potential steal of the 2023 draft and a player that I like a lot in Hoyt Stanley, who is my highest ranked BCHL player, which I know is a hot take, but I love me some Hoyt Stanley, man. Six foot three, 205 pounds. And you look at that stature and you're like, okay, he's just a physical defense, a defenseman, which is true in ways, but Hoyt Stanley has been getting a lot better in the offensive end in a lot of different ways too. You can see in the BCHL, 38 points, 53 games in the regular season. To me, he's a player that skates well. His edges are fantastic, but the awareness he has defensively is superb. The way he uses his physical size as well is subtle but effective and he's a player that I think will just be a great two-way maybe fourth defenseman in the next level he wasn't on Bob McKenzie's top 110 I think at all but he's a player that to me would be worth a second round pick but could be had in the fourth or fifth round surprisingly he's the type of player though that if he plays well if he continues to improve could be a middle pairing guy for you if it really pans out and to me in the middle rounds that would be superb to land Next up on to number seven, another potential draft steal here and another defenseman in Matthew Mania playing for the Sudbury Wolves this last year. Mania is one of the most chaotic, crazy defensemen you will find in the 2023 draft, but to me, absolutely one of the most creative. Six foot, 187 pounds, not the worst size in the world, but he is almost all offense. 67 games played, 10 goals, 28 assists for 38 points. Not the best point numbers, but the creation that he provides, the creativity he has in the offensive zone, especially 
especially around the blue line and in transition, is just impeccable. The problem is he can get beat quite a bit, and he doesn't really know how to use his size defensively at all. He's a really aggressive defensively, which doesn't really aid his skill set amazingly, but he's a solid skater, has great awareness around the puck when he does have it, and I think he's a player that could be a power play player the next level, could be a player that gets top four minutes, or is just an ECHLer. There's not really much in between, but if Mania pops, you could probably get him in the third round, fourth round, and get a great offensive D-man from that. Now, if we're talking about players that drink Grizzly energy every single shift, it's Denver Barkey, who comes in here at the sixth spot in potential draft steals of the 2023 draft. To me, Barkey is a really fascinating project. He's 5'9", 154 pounds, but plays like he's 6'2", 190. He's the type of player that knows where to be, knows how to use physicality, and knows exactly the positions he needs to be in for success. The problem is there's no one trait that is absolutely amazing besides that motor and awareness and I don't think he has the groundbreaking skill to be a first line player but he's a type of center and a type of four that I think could translate as a middle six motor guy the thing is he doesn't have explosive skating he doesn't have elite skating just pretty solid skating and that might be something that holds him back that lack of amazing quickness might be something that holds him back but right now he's predicted to go in the mid third round maybe even the later third round potentially as a fourth rounder but he's the type of player that kind of like Logan Stankoven if he's able to truly max Maximize his skill set could be an amazing prospect and a player, in my opinion, absolutely worth a top two round pick. And again, just under a point per game in the OHL, fantastic in the OHL playoffs, brilliant there. To me, the potential could still be pretty sky high. Now going on to number five here, and another really big potential draft steal, a player that's had some really interesting positions in draft rankings. I have Alex Siernik, the sole back winger who is in a really unique position for translatability at least. Five foot 10, 179 pounds, explosive speed, great hands that can keep up with that speed and translatable skill set around the net. He's a player that has a lot of great offensive things going for him, but without the puck is a little bit disinterested defensively. Physically, he just hasn't developed a physical game really much at all and he's a player that I think really needs to build some muscle really needs to build some bulk and that will really help him along the boards but he's a player that when he has the puck and even when he is not having the puck when he has the vision around him offensively he can have some great opportunities some great moments but he's a player that I think mean, could end up slipping to the fourth round could be end up slipping to the middle of the draft but he's a type of silky player that under the right development system can I think really get a lot out of him you can see he played mostly in the Elsven scan and played well in the U 20 world juniors he's the type of player that will take time and definitely will take a couple of years but once he gets to the age I mean, once he gets to that pro level in north america i think he can really start to adapt there and potentially even become a middle six player with some great skill on the power play now on to number four and another potential draft steal now say it with me another player that probably drinks grizzly energy i mean why the heck wouldn't you? Luca Pinelli at number four here is a fascinating project who will likely be in the 80 range. At least that's where Bob McKenzie has him. I could honestly see him though slipping farther into the third round, maybe even to the early fourth. Luca Pinelli, because of that size, I think it does limit it in some ways. He's five foot nine, 161 pounds, but another player that has great motor and is pretty underrated defensively, but he almost has to be just because of how he plays physically. He's not the greatest in that department, but does try. You can see this last year of Ottawa, 63 points in 67 games and 18 points in 11 playoff games. He's a player that I think has a little bit of issues getting great speed offensively and really knowing when to use his skating. It's fine. It's not going to revolutionize anybody, but this is another player that can really be make or break by that physical play, by the way he handles himself, by the way he's able to open up space. He's a player that I do like quite a bit, and especially in the second round, I would definitely take him there, but he's a player that will likely slip because of those traits and I could easily see a team again with a great system getting him in that late third round and turning him into a great top six center. But now going on to number three and a huge potential draft steal here, a player that could slip really far into the draft but turn into a great high motor NHL player in the future in Timur Mukhanov. Now five foot eight, 170 pounds. You look at that frame and yes, that is the biggest thing holding him back in my opinion. The physical traits just aren't there. But to me, he has fantastic vision, an amazing passing game and his skating is silky. It's fluid, it's fast and he's able to get that separation speed amazingly well and at a really consistent rate. 
great. But he's a player that didn't score a lot this last year, was solid in the MHL, but didn't do a lot in the MA in the VHL. He's a player that will need a lot of development time, will spend a few years in Russia, but he's the type of player that maybe you can develop as a speedy third line, second line winger who great brings some great vision, some fantastic passing ability. He's a type of offensive talent that if you get him past the third round, you're dancing. He wasn't in my top 55 for those physical traits and the reason why he doesn't have much of those. But at the same time, he's a player that if you get it past that, if you get him in the late second round, the early third round, anything past that, it's a brilliant pick. And it's an upside pick worth having. Now going on to number two, and one of my favorite prospects in the draft, and in my opinion, the best goalie of the draft, we have Youngstown and now Boston College goaltender, Jacob Fowler. Now to me, Jacob Fowler is just so fun and so good in so many ways. He's a physical beast for one, six foot two, 201 pounds, but the power at which he skates, the way he's able to get around the crease, the way he's able to just power through opponents with the, his body and the way he's able to use it and terrify players is great. Even though he doesn't have that six foot six type of size it looks like he does it looks and it's deceptively big fowler in net and you can see this last year with youngstown the ushl just dominant a 921 save percentage in 40 regular season games and a 952 save percentage in nine playoff games just absolutely unreal and you see just the track record boston college has as well and to me i think jacob fowler is in a fantastic position to increase maybe some of the talent and some of the conditioning around the net fronts and maybe he'll be able to improve that shoulder that's something that kind of kind of beat him a couple of times but overall Fowler is just such a consistent powerful powerful goaltender that has the consistency and the work ethic in my opinion to be a great starting goaltender at the next level but he's a guy that's projected to be around the third round and if you get him around then you might as well basically call yourselves winners of the draft I just gotta tell you right now but now going on to number one and the biggest potential draft steal of the 2023 NHL draft, I have, of course, my boy in Gavin Brindley. And it's hard not to have him in this spot, just considering where he's usually ranked. I have him 13 in my personal draft rankings, and he's a player that I think could end up being in that later first round, around that 25 to 32 range. And to me, if you get Gavin Brindley around that range, it is just a blissful pick. You take that every single day of the week. Sure, is his size not ideal yeah five foot nine 157 pounds but he looks more tight he looks more powerful than he gives off and he's the type of player that even though his size isn't fantastic i don't think it will limit him at the next level again a player like logan stankoven to me he's gonna be a player that provides great powerful edges uses his skating in a fantastic way and brings that game breaking offensive pace and talent that you want to have on every single team this last year of michigan 38 points in 41 games and was great in the U20 World Juniors for the U.S., getting in great positions, driving the net, doing a lot of great things, and using his passing in a fantastic way. But to me, he's one of the most creative offensive players out there, one of the most skillful offensive players out there, and that will not hold him back from being a great top sixer at the next level. To me, Brindley will be a stud, and he'll be a player that past number pick 15 is a steal no matter what. But those are my top 10 potential steals for the 2023 NHL Draft. Thank you once again to Grizzly Energy for sponsoring today's video. Absolutely love to see it. And of course, make sure you go support them and buy everything you can because it's good friggin' stuff, folks, and you don't want to miss out. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and comment down below. What do you guys think of my sleepers? Who do you want your team to end up taking in the 2023 draft? And who do you guys think could become studs and steals in the 2023 draft? Let us know down below. Of course, make sure you make sure share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. Get all the steals out there right before the draft, and click on this card all the way up here for all my 2023 draft content right in one playlist. Thank you so much for watching y'all and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.